Hey guys, welcome to Grammar again. Today we're doing Grammar and our Escritura page, right? Page M. So we'll do that after we do our Grammar lesson right now, okay? Today, go, well, make sure, first of all, that you're in your book, right? Your God's Gift of Language book, page 15. Page 15. Okay, let's look at our green box. This is the girl that tells us how to be a, um, an effective communicator, right? Remember that an effective communicator speaks and writes so that people can understand and learn something, okay? So I hope you guys are learning a lot in English class this year and that you're trying to be creative and you're trying to learn the rules, okay? Today, we're going to be talking about different parts of the sentence. We're talking about the subjects and the predicates. I think in Spanish, it's the sujeto and the predicado, right? Okay, so I think that you guys are really gonna understand this already if you've been listening to Miss Karina very well, okay? So here we go. Look at the green box, it says every sentence has two parts, okay? So let's look at our sentence right here. My grandpa collects antique locks and keys, okay? My grandpa collects antique locks and keys. We're gonna find two parts to this sentence. One of them is a subject, and one of them is a predicate. But what are they? What's the subject and a predicate? Look what it says in the box. The subject part tells us who or what the sentence is about. Who or what the sentence is about. Okay, so let's look at the sentence right here. My grandpa collects antique locks and keys. Who is this sentence about? My grandpa. So we're gonna put one line under my grandpa because usually we put one line under a subject, okay? My grandpa. Then look what the predicate says. Look at the predicate. The predicate part tells something about the subject. So what did my grandpa do, okay? What is my grandpa doing? What happened with my grandpa? Okay, that tells me about my grandpa. Usually for the predicate, we put two lines and it always starts with a verbo. It always starts with a verb, okay? So, we know this sentence is about my grandpa, but what is my grandpa doing? Collects antique locks and keys. It starts with a verb, collect that, okay? And we put two lines under the predicate. And we usually put a line between the subject and the predicate. That was a bad line. Oh, that was a horrible line. <laughs> there we go, we put a line between the subject and the predicate, okay? So let's look at the first sentence in think A. Go ahead and put your finger on the instructions. Oh, okay, this is a cool sentence. Look what it says on number one. Ancient Egyptians, Do you guys remember about the Egyptians? And Assyrians, guess what? That's another very famous civilization. We just didn't study them yet, but you heard about them in the Bible. Made their locks out of wood. And maybe you're like, what are locks? What's wood in Spanish? Madera. Locks are these things right here, okay? Locks. Can't show you that page too long because <laughs> somebody will be um, copying my answers. Okay, here we go. Ancient Egyptians and Assyrians made their locks out of wood. Okay, who is this sentence about? Who is this sentence about? Ancient Egyptians and Syrians. Good, that's your subject. Oops, I didn't even look at the, the instructions. Look at the instructions, look at number one. Draw a line, like this, between the subject and the predicate of each parts of each sentence. Number two, underline the subject part one time and underline the predicate part one time. Okay, so let's do our line. Ancient Egyptians and Assyrians, that's our subject. Line. Put your, um, one line under your subject and two lines under the predicate. What did the ancient Egyptians and Assyrians do? 
made their locks out of wood. And look, the predicate starts with a verb, okay? Your whole sentence needs to be underlined either one time or two times because your whole sentence is either, the, part of it is the subject, part of it is the predicate. Okay, look at number two. The Romans made iron keys for their metal locks. So what is the subject? Who is this sentence about? The Romans. So go ahead and put your line after the Romans. Put one line under the Romans. And then what's your predicate? Look what it says. What did the Romans do? Made iron keys for their metal locks. So put two lines under your predicate, okay? I'll let you do the other two by yourself. Now look at right B. Right B, you get to be creative, okay? Look what it says. Complete the thought by writing a subject part that tells who or what. So you get to invent it, okay? So for example, what if I said a predicate? Here's a predicate. Walked to the pulperia. Who walked to the pulperia? Let's say Mario and Dueno and Abiel walked to the pulperia. So what's my subject? Mario and Dueno and Abiel. What's my predicate? Walk to, to the pulperia. Very good, okay? So look at right, number one. Someone, blank, algo, locked the front door this morning. Who or what locked the front door this morning? What's your subject? You get to invent anybody that locked the front door this morning. Number two. Someone will unlock the door this evening. Who? Invent a subject. And then number three, someone found 10 colored pencils. Who? We don't know. <laughs> okay, you get to invent the subject. Look at right C. Complete the thought by writing a predicate part that tells what happened. So now you get to make up the variable in the rest of the sentence. A box of green and pink pencils, that's your subject, did what? What happened to them? You can say they fell on the floor, are in my backpack, um, are missing in my room, are my favorite color, okay? Anything you want to say. What do you want to say about the box of green and pink pencils? Look at number two, a large gold key something. What about the large gold key? You gotta finish the sentence. My short stubby pencil, that means your short pencil like this. What about it? What happened to it? You get to complete the sentence with the predicate. And then write D, look what it says. Write each pair of choppy sentences as one good sentence. What does that mean? Look at number one. Number one says graphite is used to make pencil lead. Clay is used to make pencil lead. Do you really have to say that? Graphite is used to make pencil lead. Clay is used to make pencil lead. How could you say that better in one sentence? Go ahead and write it down. Look at number two. Claire sharpened her pencils. Claire put away her pencils. How could you say that in only one sentence? See what you come up with. Try hard, okay? You don't have to have all those words in there. Try to make your sentence shorter and only one, okay? Okay, guys, you did good today. So remember, two parts to every sentence. Subject, predicate. Subject is who or what is the sentence about, and predicate is what did that subject do? Okay, tell me about the subject. What did it do or what is it doing? Tell me about it, okay? Here we go, let's do letter M for Escritura. Okay, let's do letter M. Okay, I did not like this capital letter I did. We're gonna do that one again, okay? 
Letter M, I always thought was crazy because it always looks like it has one, two, three humps instead of two. But if you look at your capital M, it has only two. And really, this is just your connecting stem, okay? So if you ignore that, it still only has two, don't worry, okay? That was always, when I was learning handwriting, I was always like, what is going on with that M? And then look, the N almost looks like it has two, but really it's just a connecting stem, okay? So here we go, how do we do our letter M? Well, first of all, our capital letters like this. Remember, we're not gonna go above the red line. We're gonna do a little, we're gonna start at the red line. Don't lift up your hand, there's no reason to. Start at your red line. Go down. Go up and down again. Up and down again, okay? You don't actually have to touch this hump all the way to your red line because it starts to go down a little bit, okay? You do have the option, you guys, you don't actually have to go all the way down in the middle, okay? You don't actually have to go all the way down in the middle. I don't go all the way down in the middle. I go like almost all the way. Okay, so go ahead and make sure you trace yours on your thing. And then go ahead and do it, okay? Now how do you do your oh, let's erase the whole thing there. How do you do your little ones? Okay, your little ones, you're gonna start on the bottom. Start on the bottom. And go one, two, three, basically, right? Start on the bottom, go up one, two, three. Okay? Start on the bottom, go up one, two, three. Start on the bottom, three. Bottom. Okay, it looks weird by itself, but inside a word, it's completely obvious that it is an M. Okay? So let's do the word magnify. Like they have in your paper. One, two, three, magnified. See that tomorrow, I mean, next week you'll learn the N. Make sure you dot both I's, okay? Magnify. Memory. Memory. Okay? You're like, Michelle, those are even hard to read. Yes, you gotta train your eye and your brain to read cursive. This is what it's called, okay? Let the fake heart that cursive. And you can, that's why at the bottom, remember at the bottom, you don't do it in letras de carta, you do it in letras de molde, you do it in normal letters so that you're basically translating it and you're reading it and training your eye and your mind to read cursive, okay? I'm gonna remind you about letter L. Loop, 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 and then super easy, super easy, super easy, super easy lowercase. Okay, that's it guys. Have a great day. Thanks for working hard. Bye.